What does everyone in this room? A scarecrow, shepherds, a lion, wise men, a tin man, and Mary and Joseph all have in common. We are all on a journey. Before I could go home to Macon, the place where I grew up, and see my family this week for Christmas, I had to complete this sermon. Talk about pressure. My family was calling, Josh's family was calling, friends were calling, wondering how they were gonna schedule us um, to come by and see them during their busy Christmases. And the song, There's No Place Like Home for the Holidays, seemed to be playing in every place that I went. Where these phone calls and this song all reminded me and it led me to think of a movie, The Wizard of Oz. Many of you know the famous line from this movie where Dorothy clicks her heels together three times and says, there's no place like home. All throughout the movie, Dorothy's goal was to get home just like mine this week. So you can imagine how it must feel to not be at home at Christmas time. The shepherds, Mary and Joseph, and eventually the wise men, they were not at home on this first Christmas. The shepherds, they left their homes, they left their sheep to begin their journey. Luke chapter two tells their story. It says that in that region there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them and the glory of the Lord shone around them and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David, a savior who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. The shepherds, they left their sheep, they left their livelihood, and they followed this star to an unknown place. Like the shepherd, the wise men also left their homes. They left their countries to begin their journey. And their story can be found in the book of Matthew chapter 2. And it says, in the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, wise men from the east, they came to Jerusalem asking, where is this child who has been born king of the Jews? For we observed his star at its rising and have come to pay him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was frightened and all Jerusalem with him. And calling together all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born. They told him, in Bethlehem of Judea, for so it has been written by the prophets. Then Herod secretly called for the wise men and learned from them the exact time when the star had appeared. Then he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for the child, and when you have found him, bring me word, so that I may also go and pay him homage. When they had heard the king, they set out, and there ahead of them went the star that they had seen at its rising, until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw that the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with great joy. These wise men began their journey much later and found Jesus at his home and not in the stables where the shepherds have seen him. Now Joseph and Mary's journey began long before both the shepherds and the wise men. Their story is told in Luke chapter 2. It says, In those days a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. So all went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to the city of David called Bethlehem because he was descended from the house and the family of David. He went to be registered with Mary to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. Well, I'm only five months pregnant, and my three and a half car ride to Bacon and back over Christmas wore me out. So I cannot imagine Mary, who was nine months pregnant, going on a 10-day journey to Bethlehem. The shepherds, the wise men, Mary and Joseph, 
all the people in the birth narrative of Christ, they just left their things and they left the places that they called home and they began this incredible journey. In fact, the people from the first Christmas were much like the beloved characters from The Wizard of Oz. The movie begins with Dorothy and her dog Toto and they get caught in a tornado's path and they end up in the land of Oz. Here she meets some memorable friends and they begin a journey together to meet the Wizard of Oz because he was the person everyone told them that she would be able to return home and he could possibly grant her new friends the goals of receiving a brain, courage, and heart. Well, the scarecrow is the one who sought after a brain and the lion desired courage and the tin man, it was him who longed for a heart. Well, what were Mary and Joseph and the shepherds and the wise men hoping to gain on their journey by having, by visiting the Christ child? Oddly enough, like the scarecrow who sought after a brain, I think it was the shepherds and not the wise men who sought after knowledge. A shepherd was one of the oldest occupations, and as you know, it's someone who takes care of the sheep. It was an isolated, it was a dirty, it was a lonely and not a highly regarded job. This makes it all the more interesting as to why God revealed the Christ child to shepherds. When we use the term shepherd, we not only think of it literally like David as a shepherd, but we also think of it figuratively as in Jesus is our good shepherd. The Latin word for pastor is actually shepherd. Why is this? Shepherds became known as messengers. Could this be because of the shepherds in the birth narrative? In Luke, you see that the shepherds, they gained knowledge and they began to share this knowledge with everyone. It says they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told to them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words, and she pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had seen and all that had been told to them. You can see here that the shepherd's journey helped them to understand and to acknowledge who Jesus was, and this helped people to have a whole different definition of shepherds throughout history, but more importantly, because of their journey and newfound knowledge, their message of the Christ opened up the doors for people from all classes, all walks of life, to come to know Christ and who Christ was. In The Wizard of Oz, it was the scarecrow who sought after a brain. In the movie, the scarecrow asked, can't you give me brains? And the wizard responded, you don't need them. You are learning something every day. A baby has brains, but it doesn't know much. Experience is the only thing that brings knowledge. And the longer you're on earth, the more experience you are sure to get. If the shepherds desired a brain, what did the wise men desire? Like the lion, it was the wise men who desired courage. These wise men, they belonged to a priestly caste of astrologers, usually from Persia or Babylon. And it's commonly thought that there were three wise men based on the three gifts that they brought, but we're actually unsure of the amount of wise men that came. Their knowledge of the stars, it only gets them so far before they have to go back and consult the direction from Hebrew scripture. And that's how they're able to come upon Jesus' home. In Matthew it says, on entering the house, they, the wise men, saw that the child with Mary, his mother, and they knelt down and paid him homage. Then opening their treasure chest, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they left for their own country by another road. Interestingly enough, these men are not Jewish, but are Gentiles, and yet they courageously bow down and give gifts to Jesus, gifts suited for a king. Their courage opens up the doors for not only Jews, but also Gentiles to come to know Christ. Their courage also leads them to travel down a different road instead of going back and reporting to King Herod. My favorite scene from The Wizard of Oz is when the wizard begins to talk to the lion, and the lion becomes so fearful of the wizard that he runs and he jumps out of the window. 
I cannot help but laugh every time I see this scene in this movie. But there are so many times when we all can relate, when we all feel like going and running and hiding. In the movie, the wizard confronts the lion and says, you have plenty of courage, I am sure. All you need is confidence in yourself. There is no living thing that is not afraid when it faces danger. The true courage is in facing danger when you are afraid. And that kind of courage you have in plenty. Well, we have already talked about the shepherd's knowledge and the wise man's courage. And yet it is heart that takes place from the very beginning. Like the ten men, it was Mary and Joseph who showed heart. They realized what really mattered. Joseph, a lowly carpenter, and both of them so young and so not married, they were in a very vulnerable place, a situation that could have turned out very differently. In Matthew, it says, Mary had been engaged to Joseph, but before they lived together, she was found to be with child from the Holy Spirit. Her husband, Joseph, being a righteous man and unwilling to expose her to public disgrace, planned to dismiss her quietly. But just when he had resolved to do this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife, for the child conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son, and you are to name him Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. Joseph and Mary together took heart with each other and with Christ and obeyed God and took care of Jesus. As we read earlier with the shepherds, Mary treasured all the words that the shepherds had said, and it says that she pondered them in her heart. It was Mary who was there all the days of Jesus' life. In John chapter 19, when Christ was being crucified and the soldiers, they were cast in lots and dividing his clothes, she was there. It says, meanwhile, standing near the cross of Jesus was his mother. When Jesus saw his mother and the disciples whom he loved standing beside her, he said to his mother, woman, here is your son. Then he said to the disciple, here is your mother. And from that hour, the disciple took him into his own home. I cannot imagine the pain in Mary's heart when she saw her own son die upon that cross. The tin man in the Wizard of Oz, when Dorothy left, he said, now I know I've got a heart because it is breaking. The Wizard of Oz began with a tornado that landed Dorothy and her dog Toto in this land of Oz. Her path collides with her newfound friends, the scarecrow, the lion, and the Tin Man, and they journeyed together to find the Wizard of Oz because they were told he could help them reach their goals. Like the movie, Mary Joseph the Shepherds and the Wise Men's path collided on this journey to meet the Christ child. What were they hoping to gain once they met him? If they were hoping for this journey to give them knowledge, courage, or heart, did they find that in which they were seeking? Here is where things begin to unravel. As we watch The Wizard of Oz and as we read through the scriptures, we begin to realize that they all end up at the same place where they started. At the beginning of their journey, we find the shepherds on the hillsides, the wise men in their countries, Mary and Joseph and Nazareth. God calls them all from their homes and takes them on this incredible journey. After they meet Christ, we see them all returning home, back to the same place where they all started. Has anything changed? When you watch The Wizard of Oz, you may feel the same way. At the end of the movie, you are also right back where you started. Dorothy learns that she can click her heels together three times and say, there's no place like home, and she can finally go home. When she does this, she wakes up at her home in Kansas where the movie began. Did anything really change? When you watch The Wizard of Oz, you go on a journey with the characters, hoping for the characters to find that in which they are seeking. This is the same with the scriptures. As we read the scriptures, we're cheering the people in the birth narrative on. 
We hope the scarecrow finds a brain or the shepherds discover knowledge of who Christ is. We hope the lion finds courage or the wise man to have courage not to return back to King Herod. We hope the tin man finds a heart or Mary and Joseph to love one another and be there for one another as they raise our Lord and Savior. But you begin to realize throughout the movie, we begin to realize while reading scripture that they actually have these things from the beginning. The scarecrow and shepherds were figuring things out. The lion and the wise men were facing one fear after another. The tin man and Mary and Joseph, they were caring for one another. What they were searching for, they actually had. What they really liked and gained from their journey was faith. And their faith increased the faith of the world. Through our separate journeys, we may gain knowledge, courage, and heart. But like the shepherds, wise men, and Mary and Joseph, Christ brings our journeys together to give the world a clearer picture of who God is. Through the shepherd's journey, we learn that Christ came for everyone, rich or poor. Through the wise men's journey, we learn that Christ came for every ethnicity, um, whether they're Jew or Gentile. Through Joseph and Mary's journey, we learn that Christ came for every gender, both male and female. Through the people's journey and Christ's birth narrative, they may have gained knowledge, courage, and heart, but what we really see is that they discover faith. We see Galatians chapter 3, verse 28. We see it lived out through the birth narrative. The shepherds gained faith in their knowledge of Christ, whether rich or poor. The wise men, they gained faith in their courage and ability, whether Jew or Gentile. Joseph and Mary, they gained faith in their love for Christ, whether male or female. For Galatians chapter 3, 28 says, There is no longer Jew or Greek. There is no longer slave or free. There is no longer male and female, for all of you, all of us, are one in Christ Jesus. Their journeys, they opened up a whole world to knowing and experiencing the love of Christ. For all of their journeys teach us that we are one in Christ. Christ came for us all. All of our journeys are part of a much wider story. James Kinney, he wrote a poem during the civil rights movement in our country, and it's called The Cold Within. It's a parable about the things that separate us and how the coldness in people's hearts are in itself a kind of death. I want to read it to you this morning. It goes like this. Six humans trapped by happenstance in bleak and bitter cold. Each one possessed a stick of wood, or so the stories told. Their dying fire in need of logs, the first man held his back. For of the faces round the fire, he noticed one was black. The next man, looking across the way, saw one not of his church, and couldn't bring himself to give the fire his stick of birch. The third one sat in tattered clothes. He gave his coat a hitch. Why should his log be put to use to warm the idle rich? The rich man just sat back and thought of the wealth he had in store and how to keep what he had earned from the lazy, shiftless poor. The black man's face bespoke revenge as the fire passed from his sight, for all he saw in his stick of wood was a chance to spite the white. The last man of this forlorn group did not accept for gain. Giving only to those who gave was how he played the game. Their logs held tight and death's still hands was proof of human sin. They didn't die from the cold without. They died from the cold within. Our journey is part of a much wider story. On the shepherds, the wise men, and Mary and Joseph's journey, they may have gained knowledge, courage, and heart from their experiences, but what Christ really taught them was faith. Faith in a God who came for us all. How is our journey increasing our faith? How is our journey increasing the faith of others? As we approach a new year, may we pray that God melts our hearts and helps us to use our knowledge, our courage, and our heart to help others have faith 
in a God that is big enough for us all. May we have the knowledge to be able to find God in the dark and unexpected places. It was Martin Luther King Jr. who said, only in the darkness can you see the stars. The shepherds and the wise men, they saw the star in the darkness. May we be able to see and point out where God is at work among us. May we bring the light of Christ to someone who's hungry, to someone who's lonely, to someone who's hurting. May we have the courage to act on our faith. It was William Shakespeare who said, the meaning of life is to find your gift. The purpose of life is to give it away. The shepherds, the wise men, Mary and Joseph, after meeting Jesus, had not only the courage to meet Christ themselves and to learn from Christ themselves, but to go forward and to share Christ with others. We need to find the courage to invite others on this journey. May we also echo the words of the tin man from the Wizard of Oz when he says, Now I know I've got a heart because it is breaking. May we not become complacent by the things of this world, but may God, the things that break God's heart break our heart so that we can see them and are moved enough to do something about it. This journey that began with the shepherds, the wise men, and Mary and Joseph over 2,000 years ago, continues with each one of us here today. Sometimes our journey may feel as quick as Dorothy clicking her heels together three times, or sometimes we may feel stuck in time, but hopefully throughout our journey, we're allowing God to shape us to becoming more and more made in the image of Christ. Like the shepherds, the wise men, and Mary and Joseph, by sharing our knowledge, courage, and heart, We all continue down the path that will eventually lead us home to Christ. Let us pray this morning. God, on this journey we call life, help us to realize that we are not alone. Help us to realize as your church, you have called us to use our knowledge, our courage, and heart to be a light in the darkness for others. Help us to live out our faith in you as we begin this new year. It's in Christ's holy name that we pray. Amen.